Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 30th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Late last week, the security team of Viz.com, in coordination with Microsoft, disclosed a critical vulnerability in Microsoft's Cosmos database. Cosmos is a NoSQL database that Microsoft hosts as part of its cloud offerings. The vulnerability was exposed via the Jupyter Notebook feature in Cosmos DB. Jupyter Notebooks are often used to experiment with code by providing a web-based interface that can easily be used via a browser, really popular sort of with Python, for example, as one would expect. Microsoft will provide the user with credentials to access the data in Cosmos DB. When you're using this Jupyter Notebook feature, there are also special Jupyter credentials that are being issued, but apparently enabling the Jupyter Notebook feature will allow other Cosmos DB users access to your database. Wiz promised more details later, but so far there's some rumblings that apparently Microsoft did not issue unique credential, which then allows organizations to access each other's notebooks. Microsoft quickly disabled the affected feature after being notified by the Wiz security team, but the vulnerability existed for months and it's unclear if it was exploited. Apparently exploitation is rather trivial. The main impact of this flaw is that an adversary may have obtained the primary keys of your Cosmos database and Microsoft recommends that you regenerate your primary keys. Only a subset of possibly affected customers have been notified so far and additional details again should be released later. So safe thing to do right now is to regenerate your primary keys if you're using the Cosmos database in Azure. And again, this is only a cloud offering. So uh, there is no software. So to update, really all you have to do is uh, update those keys. Open redirects used to be a flaw that was included in OWASP's list of top 10 web application vulnerabilities. And it is one of those tricky vulnerabilities that are quite common and often underestimated. So this happens if you redirect users uh, to other external sites and then aren't careful which sites you redirect to. In particular, if the site you're redirecting to is passed on the URL as a URL uh, parameter. And the reason I mention this is that Microsoft is seeing a research and phishing campaigns that heavily rely on open redirects. The victim will receive a link to a legitimate site. When clicking on the link, the victim will be redirected by that legitimate site to a CAPTCHA protected phishing page. Microsoft writes up states that the CAPTCHA is supposed to provide additional legitimacy to the phishing page, but often these CAPTCHAs are added to make it more difficult to automatically identify these phishing pages. Take this as a reason to not ignore open redirect vulnerabilities in your environment, but fix them. They are not always easy to fix if the vulnerable page is used to redirect users to a wide range of external uh, target pages. But as a good start, you may want to consider an allow list or better a scheme to digitally sign redirects to verify that the link is legitimate. And if you're using the virtualization software Parallels for the Mac, uh, IBM's X-Force released a bulletin advising of a vulnerability in Parallels that can lead to privilege escalation. The vulnerability is caused by Parallels sharing files from the host with the virtual machine. Of course, a very common feature for uh, this type of software. These files are not properly access controlled, leading to a privilege escalation flaw where a user running a virtual machine would be able to then overwrite files on the host and with that escalate a privilege. Escalation is quite straightforward with that and you should patch quickly if you're using parallels to isolate processes, in particular, for example, for malware analysis. 
Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.